I want to greet everyone. Uh, this is the weekend chat for Friday, September the 28th. It's certainly been uh, a very exciting week with the uh, Judge Kavanaugh hearings and the accusations. And um, this afternoon, I want to uh, kind of uh, bring up three issues that I think are all very related. Number one, I want to speak about the uh, 300 brave pastors in China who are standing up for Jesus. Number two, I want to speak about the accusations against Judge Kavanaugh. And number three, I want to bring it all together and tie it together and give a challenge to pastors in America. I think these are all very closely related. Well, first of all, let's look at the 300 pastors in China. Uh, on September the 1st, 2018, there were uh, 116 pastors who issued a joint statement denouncing Beijing's new regulation on religious affairs. Beijing, the capital of China, has been cracking down, and uh, China has had a history of um, uh, tremendous revivals, uh, tremendous outbreaks of the Holy Spirit, getting people saved, getting people revived, but also a history of uh, government regulations. Well, now, uh, as uh, the government is seeking to crack down, these um, religious regulations are being enforced throughout China. That was September the 1st, 2018. Now, uh, since that time, some more pastors have signed on, and they've come up with a declaration of the Christian faith. And it is a bold uh, declaration to the um, Chinese Communist Atheist government in Beijing uh, stating that they stand for Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Now, you understand that they're doing this not in America, but in China. Now, here are the four major points that they are making. Number one, the Bible is the Word of God. Uh, it cannot be altered. It cannot be changed to uh, accommodate a political ideology. And, of course, that's exactly what uh, Beijing is doing. They are rewriting the Bible to more closely con conform to, uh, to Chinese ideas. And they're saying uh, that the Bible is too politically incorrect. We want to fix it up a little bit so it doesn't trouble us so much. Well, number one, these pastors are saying we're not going along with that. The Bible is the revelation of God, and we are going to be faithful to that revelation. Number two. Uh, the pastors have also affirmed that uh, Chinese Christian churches are willing to walk the way of the cross. And, of course, the way of the cross means that they're going to uh, imitate the older generation of Christians in China uh, who were persecuted, who were beaten, who were flogged, and who were even martyred for their faith. So, number two, they're going to follow the way of the cross. Number three, they have affirmed that uh, Beijing, the Chinese Communist uh, government, has only limited authority, that the government does not have authority over the church. In the church, Jesus Christ is Lord. And then number four, the affirmation, the fourth affirmation, the churches will preach and teach a separation of church and state. Uh, the state, the government, Beijing, must not interfere with the calling and mission of the church. Now, uh, Beijing announced these new regulations in September of 2017 and uh, began to enforce these regulations in February of 2018. And what did the enforcement lead to? Well, it led to uh, Mao Zedong-style uh, brutality, uh, violent attacks on Christians and churches, unprecedented since the days of, of Mao, uh, forcing churches to hang the national uh, flag um, on their church or in their church and singing songs honoring the government, and they were forcing the churches to do that. And then they also were banning the children of Christian parents from going to church, from being catechized, from learning the Bible, learning Bible stories, from attending uh, uh, Sunday school classes. And furthermore, the government harassed pastors and their uh, family. So this was a crackdown. It was implemented in February of 2018. Uh, the pastors have responded and written, and I'm going to uh, quote it. 
They say this, God hates all attempts to suppress human souls and all acts of persecution against the Christian church, and he will condemn and judge them with righteous judgment, close quote. So this is a uh, bold uh, affirmation in the face of the government. They also affirmed, we will not accept any ban or fine imposed on our churches due to our faith. For the sake of the gospel, we are prepared to bear all losses, even the loss of our freedom and our lives, close quote. So to say the least, this is a very in-your-face, very bold statement by these Chinese pastors. Now, it reminds me of Acts chapter 5. You remember from verses 17 and following, the um, uh, apostles were imprisoned and then supernaturally delivered. Uh, the apostles were then challenged about their disobedience. Why did you uh, uh, disobey us? And then in Acts 5, 29, it says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Acts 5, 29. You remember in that same chapter, uh, Gamaliel gave uh, counsel. He said, Leave these men alone. If uh, what they're doing is of man, it will come to naught. But if it is of God, you cannot stop it. And so we read that the apostles beat, uh, were beaten. The authorities beat the apostles and let them go. And in Acts 5, verse 41, it says, And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. So that's part one. China's brave pastors who are not uh, stepping away or turning away or not being intimidated by the government. And here is part two of what I want to address, and that is the... Um, Judge Kavanaugh proceedings. Simply, they are disgraceful, uh, they are dark, they are sinister, they are evil. Uh, I am shocked that this could ever happen in America. The allegations were uncorroborated, unsubstantiated. Uh, Judge Kavanaugh had been vetted by the FBI on six separate occasions. Uh, this, uh, these allegations um, had to do with something that happened some 36 years ago uh, while he and um, uh, Dr. Ford were in high school, 36 years ago. And actually, the problem is not Dr. Ford. Uh, the problem is that there are people who are so intent in uh, promoting their agenda that they would give uh, credence to these nonsensical 36-year-old uh, uh, incidents, uh, these allegations. Uh, no doubt the sexual assault was real to Dr. Ford, but that doesn't mean it was real. For Democrats, perception is reality. You know, they create their own reality. If you're uh, a boy and have uh, the body of a boy, but if you think you're a girl, that's the reality. This is... Um, uh, this is standard for the Democrat Party. It's not the Democratic Party, it's the Democrat Party. Radical left wing. 40, 40 years ago, you could be a Democrat and be a Christian. I think that's impossible today. So uh, we need to realize that we're not voting on Brett Kavanaugh, the teenager, but on Brett Kavanaugh, the judge, with 30 years of experience under his belt. And yet, uh, as, as uh, I point out in this part two of my uh, chat, uh, this ridiculous farcical uh, thing happened where there was absolutely uh, no evidence of it. Um, Diane uh, Feinstein had uh, kept the letter she had received secret for a month or more she wanted to delay, 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 delay. She could have given it uh, privately to the FBI if they wanted to further investigate it and then, uh, and then say something about it if the investigation proved to be uh, correct or to be uh, germane to this nomination. Uh, she could have passed it on to the FBI then, but she delayed it and delayed it and delayed it and then dropped the bomb. It was all very... Uh, calculated. It's shocking uh, how far America has fallen. It's shocking uh, how far the liberal uh, left, like a noxious poisonous cloud, has come over our whole country. Uh, the LGBT movement, the transgender movement, uh, the attack on, um, uh, on people who are pro-life, uh, the uh, willingness to take the lives of 60 million unborn babies. You know, 
once we, we went the way of Roe v. Wade, we went downhill. It was downhill all the way. And now we're at the bottom of the hill, maybe even going to go further. So uh, I want to close with part three of my chat. Remember, we spoke about the pastors in China. Uh, we spoke about the nonsense that uh, uh, occurred uh, yesterday uh, when all of these uh, uncorroborated, um, hateful, um, reputation-destroying uh, allegations were leveled at, at Brett Kavanaugh. I just think of the effect on his, uh, on his wife, on his two lovely daughters, on his mother, just all this smear, this nonsense that was tolerated. What has our country come to? Now, I want to wrap that up by um, talking to pastors in American churches. Unfortunately, many pastors are asleep at the wheel. Many pastors are nothing more than entertainment specialists. They're not preaching the Word of God. They're not calling sin, sin. They're not speaking on controversial issues. They are being buffaloed and they are being intimidated. And my word to you is that you need to realize what these 300 brave Chinese pastors are doing in China. You need to have some of that spirit. You need to have the spirit of, of uh, the prophet Amos, the prophet Isaiah. You need to have that wherewithal to call sin, sin, to, to not be afraid of the liberals in your congregation, not to, to allow them to dictate what you're going to preach. We need to be the conscience of America. America, for large part, has lost its conscience. So I want to challenge pastors um, who um, uh, fail to confront evil. Um, they have failed to um, apply biblical standards to, uh, to Christians. Who or what is a Christian? Why don't we get into that a little bit? Let me tell you what a Christian is. A Christian is someone who loves what Jesus loves and hates what Jesus hates. But today, we're allowing people to be, to be uh, elders, the deacons, to be preachers uh, who love what Jesus hates and hate what Jesus loves. We've got it backward. We need to get back to the blessed word of God. Let's face it. Can a Christian support abortion on demand? Can a Christian um, support same-sex marriage? You know, when the Bible speaks about marriage, it's only one man and one woman for life. This idea of homosexual marriage that's a strange and alien and foreign concept. Everything that the Bible says about homosexuality is negative. Nothing positive is ever said about it. And so I want to challenge pastors to be the under-shepherds over God's flock. We are in a terrible situation today, and I believe that we are in that situation today because the church has fallen asleep. The church is filled with a bunch of whims. Let me tell you what's going to happen. If we go the way we are going, we're going to go downhill. But let me tell you what's going to happen in China. I believe when those 300 pastors have, have stood up against the government, some will die, some will be tortured, some will be beaten, some of them will maybe defect and change their minds. But for those who are faithful, I believe that China is on the brink of a mighty revival. And we in America will be shamed by those godly men and women who stood up and stood against the monster that's called the Chinese Communist government in Beijing. So pastors, I would pray that you would get right with God, that you would proclaim the whole counsel of God, and that for those of you out there, and I know there are some out there who are faithful, don't be discouraged because I know in so many congregations when a pastor starts preaching the whole counsel of God, they are grumbling. Preacher, you're going to run people off. Preacher, you insulted so-and-so. Preacher, you offended so-and-so. Don't listen to that. Be obedient to the Lord. And what does the Lord say? He says, preach the whole counsel of God. The Apostle Paul said that he was free from the blood of all men. And, and he's speaking in Acts 20 because he had not shunned to declare the whole counsel of God. What have we come to? I remember a couple of years ago, two years ago, at Emory University, um, where somebody had written on the sidewalk, Trump in 2016. The student body went berserk. Oh, we're offended. Oh, 
There is a murderer in our midst. Oh, we can't tolerate that. And then the president of the universe said, we will get to the bottom of this. Somebody has written Trump 2016. What a hateful statement. Come on now. You guys need to grow up and realize that you're on the wrong side. There is a right side. And one day, God will bring an awesome and fearful judgment from which there is no escape. God will do the same to those pastors who have not declared the whole counsel of God. I want to end with a good note. Remember, God is still on the throne, and prayer changes things. And also remember, he can and wants to bring revival to America.